Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight, and thought we'd take a quick browse through the changes in the uh, MX and Antics live boot menus, the, the menus you get when you first boot up an ISO or a live USB of MX or Antics. Now, what I've got started on my screen here is the Antics, uh, or I'm sorry, is the MX uh, themed uh, live system and you can see this is actually booting in uh, what we call BIOS or legacy mode that is it's not a UEFI boot it's a kind of a regular plain Jane boot so what we've got here is we've got the usual options we've always had uh, since the 19 series you can boot from whatever's installed on the disk you can run a mem test you can switch to the grub bootloader which we'll do in a second because there's actually two bootloaders this bootloader is sys Linux uh, which is great for legacy uh, USB systems. It, it's really great. So we have the menus here for setting your language at start, your time zone, uh, various boot options that are useful or not useful depending on your situation, but the, including the famous 2 RAM option that lets you load the system completely into RAM. We have the F5 for persistent static root options or all the persistence and frugal options that we've always had persist static, the static options being the versions that are on the stick and the not static options. Some people call it dynamic, but it's really the not static ones uh, get loaded into RAM. The, 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 the persistence fog is loaded in RAM when you boot. A little bit faster if you got the RAM at the cost of a little bit of time at, at, at uh, shutdown and startup as the files are loaded and or synced depending on what you're doing. Uh, F6 is various fail-safe options for loading drivers, mostly graphics drivers. If 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 it doesn't, if you don't get X the first time ago, you can try the safe and fail-safe options. F7 some console options that kind of sets the uh, resolution for console mode, and then F8 is the option that a lot of people miss. If you set any of the other F key menu options. Then, and you want those to be the default the next time you start up, you want to make sure to save those. That's what the save menu is for. Okay. Now, this is the legacy, uh, the legacy boot side of the equation. If we go over and switch to the grub side, we can get an approximation of what the UEFI version looks like. Let's just go ahead and do that. So here's an approximation of what the UEFI boot menus look like and these are different in the 21 series the bias legacy ones pretty much the same the 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 versions here for for uh for the 21 series are brand new in in the in the past we was we would launch what the customize option and you would get menus after you started up the boot process to help you assign some of the co more common boot codes that the andix live system is capable of operating with but in this case uh, now with this new, and this is actually Grub, it's not Sys Linux, this is actually Grub, and you can notice down here in the little corner it tells you how you're booting, either BIOS or UEFI if you're booting UEFI boot. Uh, you can go into the advanced options, here, well let's just start at the beginning, language, keyboard, and time zones where it defaults, those are the boot options that you see before and uh, in the F key menus on the, on, the, on, the live view, on the legacy side, but here you can set your language to whatever your language happens to be. You can set your keyboard to whatever your, ha your keyboard happens to be, and you can set your time zone to whatever time zone it happens to be. What's in parentheses is the current default, okay? It does not change, and uh, it, but the change takes effect immediately, but you can hit the reset key to reset it to whatever it was before. We go back to the main menu. This is all done with the arrow keys and, and you know, enter space bar, whatever. And you can see that your options have been selected now on the top top screen. For the advanced options, this is where you get those other F key menus, the persistence menu, the funky little boot options, the fail safe options. There's a few other extra tweaks and tricks in here, but you can set your your persistence options. So I usually use persistent static or P static root, which is just a root persistence file. Everything's in it. It's analogous to having one partition for your entire install. Okay. So if I hit that, you can see now the persistence option has been set and I will have that option now if I want that and it will go into effect on boot if I want to save those options we have the same thing we have the save menu it's analogous to that little F key save menu except you get an option 
this may be us being a little too flexible, but you can save it just on the UEFI boots. So you can actually save a different set of options for UEFI boots versus legacy boots. It's a little weird, but yeah, you've got a different machine. Maybe you, maybe you need that. Or you can save all the options. This is the one I usually use. You can save all the options to uh, to on both sides of the equation. So no, if I take that same USB stick and boot it on a system that's legacy or a system that's UFI, I'm going to get the same basic options that I've selected. Once you have all your options selected, you go back to the main menu and you fire up your drive and you will see that it will then go through the usual uh, boot up and persistence setup that we've all come to know and love from the Annex Live system. Ah, you know what? I forgot something. I forgot that this is kind of a hokey install for for, for, for VirtualBox. I need to set one more option. Uh, let's see, I want to do the persistence option. It didn't complete the boot, so it didn't save. So P static root. So you can see all the foibles right here. I'm going to save the boot options. But I need one more boot option. I need from HD because I'm actually booting from a hard drive, not from the USB. Okay. And now we're going to go. This should work now. There we go. So now I'm getting the standard setup here. I'm going to take the defaults in VirtualBox. It, 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 who cares? It's VirtualBox. I'm just doing it to show the menus. I'll set up some password changes as they normally do. It saved, you know, if you saw the scrolling text there, I turned off the splash so you can see the scrolling text, but uh, it has, in fact, saved the um, saved the boot options. There was a little little message that scrolled by there that said that. And now we're in X, and we're where we want to be uh, uh, running our live system. Okay, so I'm going to get out. I'm going to shrink this guy down here. So that is the differences in the menus. Now I'm going to show you the difference in the antics menus. The antics menus have one additional trick, at least on the 64-bit uh, releases, the full, the fuller releases. Let's see, make sure I have the right one here. Uh, yes. So this is antics running on the the UEFI, and this is antics running on the legacy. Yeah, so you can see there's no, there's no, on the legacy boot, there are no F menus on here. Why is that? Because you have to choose a kernel first. Uh, the Antics Live US, uh, Antics ISOs ship with more than one kernel. The legacy kernel is actually the default. It's a 4.9 kernel. Remember, Antics' target is older hardware. And... Quite frankly, a lot of older hardware works a lot better on the 4.9 kernel than it does on anything post 4.9. So that's kind of the one they picked to uh, to have as the default. But you can use a modern kernel too. But once you select the kernel to use, now you're going to get your F menus and all the normal things that you're used to on the legacy boot side. Okay, so here we're boot. It, sa it says we're booting the legacy 4.9 kernel. That's what we're going to boot. Other than that, the menus are exactly the same as what I just showed you. There's there's a few different options in Antics versus in Antics in MX, but for the most part, the uh, uh, those, those are distro specific. And check them out; they're more or less self-explanatory. The big one is uh, the big change is F6, which lets you pick one of the other one of the non-default uh, desktop combinations that Antics has. Okay, we're going to scroll over here to to uh, there we go. So this is the UEFI boot. You can see that down here in the lower corner. That's what it looks like, UEFI. Excuse me. The menus look pretty much the same. The default kernel is still the legacy kernel, but if you want to change it, you go into the advanced options, and there's an extra area for choosing your kernel, and it lets you pick whichever kernel you want to pick. If you're booting UEFI, you're probably getting into, you know, not caring much about the 4.9, so the 5.10 is there, but that's also available on, on both the legacy and the UEFI boots. So that's a quick overview of the changes in the new live menus, particularly on the Grub and UEFI side where you can do a lot more before you ever choose a kernel to boot. For tips, tricks, and how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or annexlinux.com. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.